Here's a question. How do you know what will be the formula of these intermediate compounds? For example, in this diagram here, this thing's labeled as Al2Ca, whereas this thing's labeled Al4Ca. How did they know what those chemical formulas were? So if the plot is given in a really simple way, like atomic percent, that makes calculating the formula really easy because as it goes from aluminum, pure aluminum over here to pure calcium, what this is telling us is that at 33.3, .3, right, at 33.3%, one-third of the atoms are calcium. Therefore, two-thirds are aluminum, right? If one-third is calcium and two-thirds are aluminum, then the formula must be Al2Ca, right? Over here, it's easy as well. At 20%, that means that one-fifth of the atoms are aluminum. Sorry, one-fifth of the atoms are calcium, and four-fifths are aluminum. Hence, it's Al4Ca, where one out of five atoms is calcium. So when it's plotted against atomic percent, it makes it really easy to label these. What about in a scenario where it's plotted in weight percent, right? So consider this one. 81 weight percent is lead, and 19 weight percent is magnesium. What would be the formula of this compound? That, by the way, is this one that we saw up here. This intermediate compound happens at 81 weight percent lead. So what would be the formula? Is it MgPb? Is it Mg2PB? Is it Mg3PB? Is it something else? Is it something totally different? Well, we can figure it out. What we have to do is you need to... You saw how easy it was once it was in atomic percent, so we need to convert this from weight percent to atomic or mole percent, right? Well, that's pretty easy to do. We can do that using the molecular weight, which I've provided here. So let's start with lead. So when we say 81 weight percent lead, let's assume that there is 100 grams of total compound. So in that 100 grams, right, in our total compound, if you assume that there are 100 grams total, then we know that 81 of those grams comes from lead, right? Because 81 weight percent is lead. So now let's multiply that uh, by 1 over the molecular weight. So there are 207.2 grams of lead per 1 mole of lead, right? Therefore, how many moles of lead? When we do 81 divided by 207.2, I find that it's 0 0.39 moles. 0 0.39 three-nine moles of lead. Now let's do the same thing with magnesium. There would be 24, uh, sorry, 19 grams, 19 grams of magnesium. Let's convert that to moles by dividing by its atomic mass. So that is 24.3, uh, 24.3 grams of magnesium per one mole of magnesium, right? When we do that, we find that it's equal to uh, 0 0.78. So there are 0 0.78 moles of magnesium. All right, so we know the raw amount of lead and the raw amount of magnesium in moles. How does this help us? Well, for one thing, hopefully you can already see it, there's 0.39 and there's 0.78. So if you multiplied 0.39 by 2, you would get 0.78, right? So there's twice as many moles of magnesium as there are lead. You could also just divide it, right? You could say 0 0.78 divided by 0 0.39 is approximately 2. And so, therefore, there's twice as many moles as there are magnesium. The formula must be magnesium 2 lead. Okay? That's counterintuitive, because to look at this diagram, this line is clear over here next to the lead. You would have thought maybe it has more lead in the formula than magnesium, but... Remember, it's because lead's molecular mass is massively larger than magnesium, so actually the chemical formula is on the magnesium side from an atomic perspective.